Hi everyone and welcome to the first video of 2019. This is the Hitchhiker's Guide to ServiceNow and we're into episode 9 where we're going to talk about how to make certain items in the service catalog having mandatory attachments so the users need to attach one or two files perhaps before ordering the ticket or not the ticket, the item of course. My name is uh, Jalan Lundqvist aka the Witch Doctor in the ServiceNow world, I've been around for a couple of years now, I think it's almost five years now, uh, working as a consultant in the normal day life, everything from technical assignments to architecture to mentoring to yeah, teaching and you name it. Been both on the, on the customer side and now as a consultant as well. If you want to connect, just hit me on over there on, on LinkedIn or yeah, YouTube channel of course, subscribe to that one so you don't miss any of the other videos and so on. But like I say on all other videos, enough about me, this is what we are going to talk about. Uh, earlier I made a video, I think it's almost a year now perhaps, uh, where I showed you how to clone the, the catalog item widget and make mandatory working there. Uh, now I'm going to try to put a little bit more out of the box so we don't need to touch those stuff of course because of the upgrade issues and so on and then of course Nathan made a really good uh, version as well on the service portal.io so I pretty much take some of the stuff I made in my old video and some of the things that Nathan did and made a, a new one which is basically just a, a macro variable that I put in a variable set so you can reuse it quite simple uh, it's working on record producers and catalog items, uh, not on other guys yet. I've been playing around for that for a couple of hours, but not really reached goal where I think it's good enough. So hopefully I'll have a part two of this this uh, functionality later on. But let's go to the real stuff instead. So basically before I start I want to show you my uh, old bad quality video which was one of the reasons I redo this one because people are asking me they can't really see what I'm showing and so on so hopefully you can use this one instead then I will also use the service portal let me zoom in that one that's good enough if you search for attachment and this is pretty much what I reused and changed a little bit we have the required attachments and there are a few differences uh, you can see that this one is actually at least just supported until Jakarta no idea if, uh, if Nathan had, had time to, to check the London one one of the reasons that I changed more stuff on this one is that uh, when I committed it just truly out of the box it didn't really work as it should work because as you can see it has an attachment here which is basically a string field where Nathan hidden the input field but when I committed this one and tested it that didn't work anymore so it was showing and that is one of the things you get probably when manipulating the DOM uh, and having an upgrade so I'm trying to leave that away even if I think it will be pretty simple to solve but who knows what Madrid will give us so I'll try to stick that one out so what I have done is basically like this just reload it we have the Samsung I have added the variable sets to this item and you can see down here this catalog item requires two more attachments before submitting and of course uh, what I have done is that you can't click on the order now button I need to have one you can see it counts down and I'll hit one more and then suddenly this one functionality is working again if I decide to remove something it will be turned gray out again so this is what I'm going to show you and how I have done it and one of the things I have done is if I go to my catalog item I have actually added a field on the the catalog item table the SC cat item called uh, yeah attachment needed or due under at under need and just put in a value too uh, the default value is zero of course so we don't need to change that if they want to or don't need any attachments and 
when I scroll down you can see that I have a variable set that had been added to this uh, Samsung and in that variable set it's basically just one variable I put the order to 10,000 just to make sure that it ends up at the bottom you might want it somewhere else and this variable is just doing one thing and when it's loaded I'll show you come on there we go it's the macro type variable and I'm just calling a widget as you can see here so this is where all the magic is happening so let's take a look at the widget and I'll start over here so the first thing I need to do is of course fetch what value does we want to put in the mandatory field for how many attachments so I'm basically just getting the parameter to get the sys ID as you can see in the URL out of the box you get the sys ID of the catalog item so I'm getting that one fetching that item and then I put in the value in this variable so if I find it I'll put in the value otherwise zero just to be sure that we don't mess stuff up making certain items uh, mandatory on attachment uh, and so on you never know what happens then we have the client script <coughs> sorry so basically we are going to see how many attachments are left for the user to upload and when it loaded of course that is the same amount as the total so we'll set that one then we need to get the parent scope because this is an embedded widget so my scope is not the place where that patterns would end up and when I say my scope this embedded widget scope so we need to actually find the scope that is above and there is a lot of layers so what we have done is just have a function we'll put in our current scope then we can go down here and see we look at that scope does that scope has an item in it then we will return that scope if it's not we check okay does it have a, a dollar sign parent yes it does then we just dig up another level re calling ourselves again and just looping through and somewhere on that way we will find a nice little item and then we will return that that means that the scope dot parent is hopefully the scope of the parent widget we have then we're using the angular watch to look at this variable meaning the parent dot attachment when that variable is changing then we want to do this first one we do of course is take a look does it have an attachment this is actually an array so it puts each attachment gets into that array so if that one exists it doesn't exist before you actually have any attachment if it does exist we measure the length of the array is that equal to or bigger than what we need if it is we call this function which pretty much means that we enable to compress and order now otherwise we keep it disabled take a look at this disable what we actually can see is we calculate how many attachments are left until it gets enabled by taking the, the data needed minus of course how long the attachment array is then we are actually reducing a variable that exists in out of the box one called submitted which is actually if you remember sometimes when you hit order now or submit you stay on the form but everything is grayed out because it's been already been submitted once so we're actually saying that that one should be true so that is why it gets grayed out when we don't have a notch of attachment then of course when we reach the number then we'll just change that one to false and we're good to go last thing is the template and basically I just done two things I removed the styling 
below here because that isn't needed because that was for the attachment field and that is probably the place you need to to reconfigure if you want it to work the way uh, Nathan's out of the box ones. Otherwise, I also added this one, and this one basically says as long as we don't have the enough amount of attachment, show us this text. And here you can see I'm using the variable to give you the correct amount of variables left. So when I add another one, you can see the text disappears and if I just delete an attachment it will pop up again and the old now is gone. And by doing this hopefully it will work for example in Madrid and so on as well. Um, it wasn't more than that to be honest. I'm just going through that I mentioned everything. Uh, nope. So this is one way of doing it. I will put the widget under my, my github in the episode 9. I will probably lay it out something like this. Let me show you. Uh, there we go. I will probably put the widget in its own uh, folder on github and then you will have one file for each uh, section of the widget. I will also put up uh, an update set just to for those who just want to download and add that one as well. So that's about it. Hopefully it, you can uh, enjoy this one and help you on your journey on making the, the catalog items mandatory. So see you around.